Hi guys, it's been a long time. Um, the, in this video, I'm uh, going to show you uh, the Holdebro Shuriken 250. Uh, if you have watched my channel, you know that I am not been into the racing drones or the uh, small size drones. For me, it's all about uh, the bigger ones and the medium ones. Uh, but I'm really excited now because uh, now I'm going into uh, a territory I haven't been in before, so this is very exciting. Uh, this is my new Holy Bro Shuriken. I have unpacked it before and I have flown it. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is my uh, some uh, new thoughts uh, being a newbie uh, with the smaller drones and uh, what I have found out, and uh, especially about this uh, model. It comes in a very good case. And I think the small drones needs a good case to be transported in because they are small. Yes, um, as you can see, this is not like it uh, is when you when it's new. Uh, other propellers, new antenna, and um, uh, what I found out is that um, this is a very, very good uh, frame. It's very uh, rigid and. Uh, and it can do the crashes very very good. I haven't crashed it a lot, but I have crashed it uh, with absolutely no no problem. Only a scratch on the propellers. <clears throat> what I found out is that uh, being a newbie like me, uh, it's important to uh, don't have the uh, the capability of uh, being very agile and very uh, yeah, be racing prepped. It's all about learning how to control this uh, little frame. So, uh, first of all, uh, I found out that the battery with the standard propellers, uh, which is the 5045 uh, bull nose propellers, uh, the battery gets too warm uh, when you fly it. Even uh, up in uh, where I live, where it's cold in the winter and the autumn, it, the battery gets warm. So the first thing I did was to uh, uh, exchange propellers, the originals for this one which are Genfan uh, 5040. So a little, less, a little bit less angle on the propellers and, uh, and the, the heat issue was absolutely no problem after that. The second thing that I did was uh, make a new antenna. Uh, like you know, you cannot, um, you cannot power it on without the transmitter antenna for the video transmitter. This is uh, the um, uh, way uh, which I use uh, on my uh, other receivers and transmitters. So uh, the original I have packed away, I haven't never really used it. But um, considering that I'm going to crash a lot, I think, um, I took this standard 5.8 uh, gigahertz antenna, took off the top and uh, made uh, this one. This one you can screw on. Um, and it's no problem crashing here. When you have the battery on, you will see that uh, the antenna will uh, come a little bit under the uh, battery. So when you crash like this, it will not uh, make any force on this one. <clears throat> because that is the problem here. Um, the, the adapter or the uh, SMA connector to the, um, to the transmitter is directly soldered to the uh, board underneath here. So if you break this one, uh, you have to uh, ch exchange the whole thing, I think. Uh, maybe you can fix it, I don't know. But what I did, I made this one, and I also took a SMA connector here to make the um, uh, pin out here, because this one has the uh, she, uh, the female uh, adapter. So I had to screw this one in, and I also had some electrical tape around here, so it fits very tight in here. So this should be no problem uh, when you crash it, uh, because this is a really fragile uh, place on this um, this one. With the original, you just screw it down on the board, and it's very rigid. This is a little bit more flexible, but even this one, uh, if you crash it, it will uh, have a lot of strain on it uh, like this, so you can break it. This way, it's no problem. The third thing that I did was that uh, 
uh, I had to have a, a lead strip in the back here because uh, I, when it was like uh, uh, 50 60 meters away from me I couldn't see the uh, see the way it uh, went and in the beginning I couldn't use the uh, uh, the goggles so I just uh, fixed the uh, uh, lead strip here and uh, just soldered this cable to the ESC mounts uh, the plus and minus in here uh, so this uh, lights up every time the battery is connected so this way it was uh, it became a much uh, easier model to to handle so that was uh, important uh, I think for me at least then I'm going to show you a little bit on the uh, clean flight, uh, uh, the PIDs uh, that I'm using as a, as a beginner. Okay, <clears throat> now we're in clean flight. Let me move it a little bit closer here. And um, for a beginner this is uh, not uh, hard at all it's very intuitive and very easy to set up so um, uh, you can find other videos uh, on YouTube where the, on how to set up the, um, the software in the Shuriken 250 for me it was like uh, the most important thing was to yeah first of all the modes uh, I use a separate switch for the arming um, on my Fujitaba, I've set up the arming to this switch, so um, I to to arm the motors to even can use the shuriken. I have to use this switch, and even then the propellers won't start. I have set it up so the propellers don't start until I I uh, give it a little bit of throttle. That's just extra security. I think is uh, good for a beginner. I use two flight modes. I use the angle. And I use the horizon. The horizon is very agile, it's very sensitive, it's uh, easy to do the roll and flips. Actually that's not the thing I have done the most of but uh, I, I can feel how easy it is to do. Uh, the mode that I use the most is angle. Um, and uh, angle is very good uh, in this uh, set uh, on this quad and, and with the PIDs I'm gonna show you afterwards. One uh, major thing that I found out was that um, <clears throat> I also have set up um, air mode so that um, I, uh, I can uh, choose to uh, activate air mode um, uh, at the same time that I use the other flight modes. This uh, air mode is the, mm, the mode that uh, makes sure the propellers don't stop up in the air and smooths out uh, a little bit of the movements so it don't uh, just fall out of the sky or, or gets very edgy when you fly it it's very helpful for a beginner <clears throat> so just set it up and you can also like yeah, move this all over here so it always is uh, activated but the problem is that it will give some throttle when you land so I found out uh, very quickly that uh, I have to turn off the air mode before I land and the landing will go very very smoothly I also have set up the beeper, uh, which um, I have a um, uh, I have a switch that uh, if I lose it in the grass or something when I fly uh, or in the woods, I just switch it and the beeper will make uh, a tone and I will easily uh, find the quadcopter again. Okay, now for the pin tuning, <coughs> I did a lot of research about this. And uh, actually when I flew it the first time, when it was uh, with the standard uh, PIDs from the factory, it was uh, okay. It was like, uh, it was new to me and everything. So I, I didn't really know what to think about them, but it flew and it was okay. And uh, But actually it was, uh, even I could feel that it was crappy after I changed the pits to these ones. Um, these ones uh, are the pits that I, made uh, after a few flights and I've read a lot about it and uh, these ones are very good uh, for, for me as a beginner. So you will have the really quick response uh, on the one mode that I showed you, the, um, 
uh, the horizon, horizon mode, but the angle mode will be very, very nice uh, in combination with the uh, air mode. So this is, um, yeah, very, very good. I can really recommend uh, this one. Other than that, um, I did some work on the battery settings. I don't know if, if this is correct, but I am very, very concerned about my batteries all the time. I have destroyed a few LiPos through, through the years, so uh, I'm very cautious about them. Uh, but I found that uh, the last setting that was 0.2 volts higher on all of these, uh, except for the maximum cell voltage, was a little bit too conservative. Uh, I can uh, easily uh, use the battery down to 3.6 and it stopped like uh, on 3.75 with the, with the old settings. So I have changed them today and I'm gonna try them tomorrow. Hopefully that will be uh, okay. Yes, that's the clean flight. Yes, uh, some final thoughts. Like I said, this is a really good frame. Uh, but uh, what I think is that uh, it's it's really a beginner's uh, frame. Of course, it it, it goes very fast. Uh, it's light. It's rigid, and it's uh, really uh, a good uh, good one. But uh, I I definitely can feel that it's it's a heavy one, and it's uh, there's a lot of potential for, um, for this size and these motors to to do lots of uh, other stuff. And uh, when it's a lighter frame. So uh, and also this is uh, also have the um, the basic version of the flight controller. So it has no barometer, uh, don't have a compass. Uh, so you don't have the help uh, from from uh, the function these uh, flight for flight controllers have. So for me, I'm quickly on to a new one. So I have actually already ordered a, a new one, which I will show you in a, in a future video. Uh, batteries, I have bought two types from Hobby King, uh, one, it's all 4S, of course, so uh, these are the 1.6, 25 to 50C, and this uh, 14 milliamps, uh, which actually is uh, 65C, yeah, 65C, yeah. Uh, I got a little bit more flight time out of this one, uh, like 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds. Uh, this was a little bit more uh, punching, uh, punching. but uh, should I prioritize one of them? I definitely go for this one. It's uh, smaller, it's uh, lighter, um, has this uh, lower, um, it's lower than this one, and it has a little bit more capacity. So uh, in practical use, this is the best one. But uh, of course I like this one, and, and it also has this led the function that you can check the status of it. But uh, like I said, I'm very worried about my batteries and that I don't overuse them. So I always measure them uh, when I'm flying and uh, I use the OSD to check that everything is okay. Uh, I use my Futab radio. Uh, I have been used this for many years now and it's a very good radio. But uh, going into the micro-sized and uh, racing drone uh, uh, business, I also have uh, uh, gotten to know this one. Um, very nice Turner G Evolution. Actually, I haven't used it yet. Um, so um, I haven't set it up for this one yet, but I have ordered some small receivers, some micro receivers to use inside the shuriken. So when it arrives, I will set this up for this one. Um, that will be a new experience. Uh, I know the Futaba very uh, very well, so I know all its ups and downs and uh, how to and what not to and everything. But uh, I have to learn this one too. It's uh, nice. Um, there have been people saying that this is the future of uh, RC, and I can understand what they uh, what they mean. It's uh, light. It's very light. It's very small. It's very handy, and you can see the gimbals are much smaller than the. Uh, than the uh, Futaba uh, and of course it's uh, totally different to use so micro quad micro control uh, micro controller seems uh, logic to me really so we will see this one in another video and uh, I also uh, have uh, yeah, built this one this is the v2 of the quantum goggles 
using this Boscom uh, receiver and uh, yeah it's really standard uh, stuff it's uh, yeah, it's a new experience to use actually it, it's difficult to go from a screen which I used before to these goggles uh, it takes some use it takes some time to get used to but uh, of course this is the this is the reason why you you uh, you uh, uh, do uh, micro drones, uh, racing drones, to get the experience through this one. Is is really what it's all about. So I'm looking forward to uh, to uh, to learn more 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 about them and to use them and uh, have some good uh, flying. And of course, I will show you on this channel. So stay tuned. Bye.